Hello, I am Kelly Lorenz, a sophomore biology and communications major at Concordia College. Hi, I'm Amelia Landsberg, a sophomore biology and environmental studies major at Concordia too. And I'm Vladimir Lind, I'm a biology major at Concordia College. Our poster is Salty Roads Flavoring Our Ecosystem. Do road salts have an effect on the conductivity and pH levels of soil in northwestern Minnesota? So some background information on our topic. As the title suggests, our poster deals with dumping salt into the environment and the effects. Um, some of the effects include ion movement, so the sodium and chloride ions will separate, and the chloride ions will move with the water and the sodium ions tend to stay in the soil. So some of the impacts that that causes on soil, it'll cause soil to be more dehydrated and to become a little bit more basic. So there's a pH change that's visible there. And plants, when exposed to salt, will have damage to whatever part is exposed. So whether that's stem, leaves, or roots, and they can die from too much salt exposure. And some impacts on animals, there hasn't been too much study on animal impacts, but amphibian eggs have been observed to be killed with the surviving eggs having their growth stunted. So from there, it's visible that it doesn't have a good effect on animals. So for our project, our hypothesis that we came up with to answer the research question when road salt is applied to roadways, does it enter nearby soil or does it stay concentrated close to the road? Our null hypothesis is that ion concentrations are the same at all distances from the road, whether that's close or far. And then we have two alternative hypotheses. The first saying that ion concentrations will decrease with distance from the road. And the other one saying that it will increase with distance from the road. Um, so the first part of our methods was the soil collection. We first collected 20 samples at five different sites and 10 samples at our control site. We had 110 total data points and at each site excluding the control, we collected 10 samples at an intersection and 10 in the middle of the road section. Um, using a tape measure, we measured out 10 meters from the road and took samples at one meter increments. We dug up the soil with trowels and put the soil in labeled plastic bags. Our site one was Highway 10 in Holly, Minnesota. Site two was a dirt road in Holly, Minnesota. Site three was a paved road by the Fargo International Airport. Site four was a road in residential Fargo. And site five was Goose Bear Park in Moorhead, Minnesota. The control site was a non-agricultural field near Riverton Township, Minnesota. Then we did the soil conductivity and pH testing. Um, we weighed out about 20 grams of soil from each sample from the six sites on a balance. We put the soil and 120 milliliters of water into cups, stirred the mixture for about 30 seconds, and used a handheld conductivity meter to measure the salt ions found in the soil. We put pH strips into the same mixtures to determine the pH of each sample. We used ANOVA and Tukey Kramer HSD tests to analyze the data. The ANOVA test determined if there is something different between the sites and the Tukey Kramer HSD test specified what the difference was. Okay, so <clears throat> next is the results. Um, so the conductivity of the control and the experimental groups were found to be significantly different with a p-value of less than 0.1 and there was no significant difference between the middle and intersection groups. There were less um, sodium ions present in the soil samples, samples further away from the road, which makes sense because the salt is applied on the roadway and we would expect it to have a higher concentration closer to the side of the road. In terms, in terms of hydrogen ion concentration, the pH was not significant depending on the increments from the road, though it was significant between the control and experimental groups um, with the p-value again uh, less than one. And the pH trend indicated that the samples became more basic further from the road, um, but not significantly so. So we don't have any um, significant statistics there, um, but it did get more basic. 
So kind of looking at the graphs here for figure one, <clears throat> excuse me, the mean for the control was a pH value of six um, and the intersection in the middle of the road had similar pH values. The middle of the road had a mean pH value of 7.54 and the intersection 7.74. Um, so it shows no significant difference from the intersection to the middle, but however, there is a significant difference between the middle and intersection and the control site. Um, and the error bar is shown on the graph with error bars. Um, and yeah, so the uh, error is low here. And we thought that there'd be more salt applied at the intersection. So there would be um, more salt concentration um, at the intersection because we feel that they're more dangerous. So we thought they would apply more. So yeah, and then the mean for the control of uh, figure two, the mean for the control was a conductivity of 224.37 microsiemens, uh, 13, uh, 1,394 uh, microsiemens for the intersection and 1,530 microsiemens for the middle. The error bars are not representative of the p-value. The p-value for the control was less than 0 0.01 supporting the results. And these results show that there's no significant difference between the intersection and the middle of the road, but there is a significant difference between the control and the intersection slash middle of the road, which again, as I mentioned earlier, um, we thought that there would be more um, iron concentration at the intersection, um, but there was not, but there definitely was a significant difference between the control, um, which had no salt applied to the intersection and middle, which had salt applied. Um, for figure three, each dot on the graph represents the conductivity measured at every distance at each of the six test sites. The line of best fit shows that the average conductivity of all the test sites together decreases as you get further from the road, which makes sense and like follows what we had predicted um, in our alternative hypoth hypothesis, because um, the areas closer to the road would be expected to have higher salt concentrations. And then the results discussion. So the results from the conductivity tests are reflective of road salt diffusing from the road as the high concentrations of sodium ions through the road that generally decrease matches with how previous research has shown salt ions to act. The pH test also shows the control environment to have a lower pH concentration than the experimental environments. And because higher um, sodium chloride concentrations correspond with higher pH. Both tests show that the road salt is leaving the road and entering the neighboring environment. Um, there was no significant difference in pH between our experimental sites, but this may be due to the use of litmus paper rather than a more precise measuring tool. Um, all we had access to were, was litmus paper. And we did actually end up taking litmus paper and doing the negative log to kind of look at that data. But for the sake of simplicity, we left it in the pH scale of 114. Um, but that kind of is a bit of a limitation there. And then also another thing, our conductivity meter sometimes measured in Siemens and sometimes in micro Siemens. So we kind of feel like there's a little bit off with the calibration there, but we couldn't figure out how to make it like consistently stay in the same unit. So that could also be a limiting factor in our experiment. Um, some potential areas of future study could look at salt levels at different parts in the year or over a longer time frame. Um, like it, it'd be interesting to see it in the winter when the salt is being applied, though getting the soil samples would be more difficult as the soil is buried or frozen. But um, another study could look at the soil in different locations around the state or the country to see how that differs. This would give a better idea of the rate at which salt moves through, through the environment. And then other areas of studies could look at the impacts on different road salt alternatives, such as sand or sugar. And here are sources. We'd also like to thank our professors that helped us with this project, Dr. Joseph Whitaker and Dr. Michael Bush. They helped us a lot in interpreting our data, as well as suggesting testing sites and supplying us with the materials that we would need to complete our project. So thank you for that. Yeah, and then here's just like one last view of our whole poster. So thank you.